up? I'm Joe with OC Detailing, and today I want to talk about paint correction. So I have a Model 3 here. It's uh, my favorite color to correct. It's black, and I'm going to show you some of the defects on this car, and then we're going to show you the process that we go through here at OC Detailing to remove them. So I have my flashlight here that I like to look at paint with. Uh, this is a Phoenix light. Uh, these are very bright flashlights, and it, um, for me, it's been the best light I could find for seeing defects on paint because I've tried a lot of other pin lights and a lot of ambient lighting, and I have enough light in the shop that you can literally see it from space. Not really. But, you know, it's bright in here. Uh, but this light will show everything. It'll hurt your feelings, too, because a lot of times you'll think you got paint perfect, and then you look with one of these, and you can see defects that you can't really see in some of this other ambient lighting. But the cool thing is when you remove them, when you actually get, a, a get paint where it's dialed as you can get it with this light, it gives it like that HD glow. You feel like you're looking at a car that's on a on a HD TV. It's a really cool effect. And that's why we like doing it, because we just want them to be extra shiny. Uh, as far as the defects go, this car came in straight from the factory this way. It's fairly new. It's got a lot of sanding marks on it. Uh, the reason the sanding marks are there is because there was dust in the paint. Uh, if you guys were to do a Google search on Tesla Model 3, dust in the paint, or any Tesla dust in the paint, the reason the sanding marks are there is from a dust nib. The dust nibs are actually created when dust gets in the paint during the painting process. It's kind of common on Teslas, we see it a lot, and Tesla tries to address these problems at the factory. And the way they do it is they take a DA with a little piece of sandpaper on it, and they sand the piece of dust, and it's a very high grit sandpaper. And then it leaves a cluster of little marks we like to call pigtails. And you can see it, it almost looks like circles, or like a, a it'll look like a dull patch in the paint. Because after they do that, they quickly polish it over, uh, which restores color. But it doesn't completely get rid of the little sanding marks, so we see a lot of that. And then also, I can see where they tried to buff this car out, so they have a, what I call DA haze here. Um, DA haze is created from a DA polisher uh, when they're compounding, and that's an aggressive step, and the abrasives and the polish are actually micro-marring the paint. Uh, this is something we actually do. We create DA haze when we're correcting paint, but uh, after we do that, we go back and refine it with a polish that removes the DA haze so you get that really crisp finish I was talking about. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start polishing this. I have my my Rupes uh, Mark II polisher here and a microfiber finishing disc. Uh, this is my favorite compounding pad for a Tesla. I've got some compound here. This is a, a CarPro compound because I'm a CarPro fanboy and I like all their products because so they work really well. So I'm just putting some compound on here. And I'm gonna work in sections that are uh, about two by two. Uh, I want to pay special focus on this one right here. So this is another defect that's on this car that happens a lot. This, that right there, that's an acid etching on the paint. We have washed this car, we've clay barred this car, we have used an iron fault removal and a mineral deposit removal, and there's still this mark left over. That's caused by a bug that's splattered on here and the enzymes in the bug left a stain on the paint. Um, people talk about Tesla paint being soft, and to my experience, all paint's soft. There's no paint I've ever seen that I couldn't go like this and scratch it with my finger. However, this paint is extremely prone to acid etching and chemical etchings, and I've seen it so much, like, uh, from stuff like this, just the bug hitting it leaves a little stain on the paint, and that's gonna have to be physically compounded out to be removed. Uh, also, you have things like bird poop. Bird poop will leave a stain on the paint. And that's one of the huge benefits of the ceramic coating. When you do a ceramic coating, it stops that from happening because that's the big sell on ceramic coatings is that they're very chemical resistant. Uh, you know, they, they don't wash off and they resist chemicals like this. So this wouldn't have happened if this car was already coated. Uh, now I'm going to get to the polishing. I'll actually remove that in this step too. And this has already been compounded by somebody at Tesla. So there's a lot of DA haze here. It looks very hazy. The finish is dull. Um, yeah. You can actually see where the, they, they had trouble keeping their pad flat going between the lines here. And yeah, it just looks bad for black. So let me make this better. So I'm gonna start with step one here. Like I said, I got a Rupes Mark II polisher, Meguiar's microfiber finishing disc, and some CarPro clear cut. Uh, when I polish, I like to use about Speed two, two and a half, but I also use a Kevin Brown washer mod on this so it free spins. Um. Now 
going to show you the results of my first step. Uh, I have this compounded now. All the compounding done. Uh, the compounding for this section is done. So I'm going to take my ultra plushy towel here. Ta-da! So I don't create any marring while I'm wiping off my polish. I'm going to go ahead and wipe it off. I get the bulk of it, flip my towel, get the rest. And now, let's see what we got here. So, I actually created a much finer haze pattern than what was here, and this is like, this is an example of proper DA buffing, because I try to leave as little of that as I can. Like, see the, the very fine haze pattern here? This is actually a pretty big haze pattern that was already on the car from whoever polished it before, and there's the one I created. Really finite, it looks very different, right? So you can actually see this one pretty clearly versus mine. It's a little, it's much finer. Also, my acid mark from the bug is gone. Uh, I don't remember where it was, but it was right there somewhere. It's gone. <laughs> Anyways, it's gone. It's not there anymore. When, when you're left with this finish, this is actually acceptable to a lot of people. I see a lot of cars that look like this all the time, and people are like, hey, look, it looks way better than that. So let's send it, bruh. But... Uh, we're kind of picky and very OCD, so now I'm gonna go back and refine this. Uh, let me get to my next step. Now I'm switching my pad to a polishing pad. Uh, I like using these uh, yellow thin pads from Meguiar's. Uh, uh, the polish I'm using here is actually Optima Hyper Polish. So it's been my uh, go-to for years. I really like this stuff. So I'm giving a little mist on there. And now again, I'm going. I, the ideal of this step is like I was using my. Aggressive microfiber pad to remove the big defects, the acid etching, the swirls, the tick marks created from whoever polished this before. Um, I didn't explain what a tick mark is. A tick mark is when you get a little particle of paint trapped in this and it actually drags around in a DA pattern. So it goes like this and it leaves a little fine like ticks. They look like little T's. Uh, one of the most annoying things to remove from paint. So uh, if you keep your pads really, really clean and you keep your working surface really clean and uh, you don't overcycle your polishes and compounds, it goes a long way to not putting tick marks in the paint because uh, that is one of the things that you will fight and spend more time on than anything if you're improperly polishing with one of these big throw DAs. So now I'm gonna go back with my finishing step. This will remove the haze that I just created uh, and leave us with that glassy finish that I love that it's uh, ready to coat. Now, I polish very quickly. Uh, you know, if, if you're compounding, in my, in my opinion, if you're doing your correction work right and you compound a car right, your polishing step should go pretty quick because you're just removing the slightest amount of micro haze. So let's wipe it off and see what we got here. We have what we started with originally. And then there's what I just polished or I corrected. You can see no haze there. No swirls, no scratches anymore. In fact, if you notice the camera keeps getting blurry, it's having so much trouble focusing right here because the reflection is so clear, it can't tell that I'm not looking at the ceiling. So the, uh, the phone here is actually having trouble focusing on the reflection. Where over here, it has no problem whatsoever doing it because of the swirls and stuff. So it knows that actually I'm looking at paint now, kinda. I don't know how else to explain that, but it's pretty cool how it's having trouble focusing over there. That just means I did my job really well. So, so that's how we correct paint around here. This is the standard we hold ourselves to. Here's some more examples of the area around it. See it swirly, hazy, and perfect. That's how we correct paint on a Model 3. That's the standard we hold ourselves to before doing our ceramic coating. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos. I'm Joe with OC Detailing.